And there's my three, two, one. Here we are live. And once again, it's Monday night, usual time here in the mountains of Mountain Standard Time, Northern Arizona, for exegesis number 187. And I've been communicating a little bit here with Len just a moment ago. Um, let me show some of this. And we had the howdy do good evening routine. <laughs> and the Middle Tennessee business includes mid 50s today after very cold last week. Um, and no, I did not get a new gig as a weather man in the whatever you want to call this stream yard. I don't know what to call it. StreamYard Broadcasting Services. StreamYard Broadcasting. Yeah, SBS. And that would be SBS. <laughs> um, I wrote down that I was checking my screen and checking it twice. Didn't seem to work out. And, uh, oh, thank you. I'm Yes, I'm official tonight. Thank you. I'm uh, coat and tie. Why? With my, uh, notice my, uh, my pin, which I won't tell you what it says on it, and you can't read it from that far away, but it is a an official government pin. Oh, and I'm wearing my official Navy tie. It's not a government tie, but it is a Navy tie. I think you can kind of see there a little bit. I've got the anchors and anchors away. Um, why? Why the tie? Why the official blah, blah tonight? Well, uh, we will get through our preliminaries, and then we will get into, as it says here, beginning divine guidance in earnest, intro, and we go, on we go. Intro meaning, you know, the intro of the book. Uh, what is under Anchors away. There you go. <laughs> um, we will begin our divine guidance text from the very beginning, which includes the intro type stuff. Uh, what do we call this? There's the the preface and the opening scriptures. And then we have the introduction, and we'll see how far we get. Introduction, if you have the text in front of you, starts on page one but doesn't have a page number. Show it to you. There it is. No page number. Not until you get to pages two and three. And we'll get to at least through page two, maybe into page three through, well, three and four. Or, well, I don't think we can get past the bottom of four because that'll start five. Well, we could. Could get through five pages tonight. I've looked at it all, and the reason, oh, earthquake, earthquake. No, just kidding. <laughs> that's me shaking up the table here. Uh, oh, that's good. I can imitate earthquakes like that. Oh, no. <laughs> Craziness. All right. There's our anchors away again. <laughs> Instead of an earthquake, it's, uh-oh, we're uh, on uh, precarious open sea stuff, storms. Um, I added here, plus a few bonuses, no extra charge, some timely, healthy advice from one who has both expertise and experience. You'll see what that's about as we get there. So our usual preliminaries, being that it's Monday night and we are in our 187th edition of Exegesis Monday night. Uh, I call it exegesis, even though we don't always exegete. And people say, what is exegesis anyway? Well, if you, let me see, how do I want to start this? If you wanted to know what some of these technical things are in the scriptures that sometimes we think could be real and we're not sure, uh-oh, I got a tip from, yeah, believe it or not, it's 5G. Does it look okay? I wonder if it's dark. Let me see if I got all the lights on. Two, three, four. Five. Um, I'm going to try something for a second. This is a very 
um, preliminary tests. I, I guess you have to be online when you're doing it. Let me try something for a second. Let me see what happens if I were to turn on an extra couple thousand uh, lumens. Tilt this a bit. I'm going to add some lighting. Let me see how well I can do this. Oh, no, this one doesn't want to really go where I want it to. Hold on here. That doesn't look like that's going to make a big difference here. Hold on. Hmm. Yeah, what would happen if I push this button? I don't think that's going to be good, actually. Yeah, look at that. How about that for messed up? Board looks a little fuzzy. Yeah, I think it it looks small, too. I'm not sure why. Boy, that, that lighting doesn't work well at all. But it might work if I used it from a different angle. You know, I don't like what that's doing. Let me see something now. Hmm. I don't really notice a difference, but I'll leave it on for a while. Um, I'm going to put this up here so that we can see that Len asked if the board is a bit fuzzy. My problem with the board right now is it seems a little bit, a little bit smaller and farther away, and I don't know why that is. I don't think I can make it closer. I'm zooming in on my screen, but... I can't tell if that makes it bigger on your screen, which I doubt it does. I think it just does it on mine. So, and that's too bad that the back screen there is fuzzy. Don't know what to tell you. What is this part here? I'm going to try something. We're testing some things. Um, I don't know. Let me see. What does this do? Oh, that, that's for full screen. Um, does that make any difference to you, this full screen business? And I'm going to exit it. Because that's just, I think, in, in my computer or laptop, so to speak, uh, which is real goofy. Um, let's see if I get any more info from you on that. Nope, makes no difference. All right. Didn't get any better. Okay, well, um, let me see what happens when I turn this back off. 2,000 lumens. I don't think that made any difference. Can't tell. All right. Uh, anyway, so enough of the little bit sort of preliminary uh, shenanigans or pre-preliminary. Because then we have the preliminaries. Now, what I want to mention is we are in our text here. It says divine guides. You know what? One, two, three, four, five. Maybe it's because I've got five lines tonight. And so the writing is smaller. Yep, no difference. All right. Uh, I won't even put that up on the uh, deal. But I will do this. I will put up our new text here, divine guidance by RB Theme Jr., which I think I can make a little bit bigger there so you can see it. and. Tonight, we will start, we talked about it last week and went through a little bit of stuff to sh like it around page 20, which I said we will get to eventually in earnest, meaning we will go over it again. Um, we saw some of the table of contents stuff, and that's why when I went to around page 20, guidance through, uh, let's see, there's prayer at 19, through right lobe of the soul, through God's word which gets into grammar, definitely the grammar stuff. Uh, tonight, we will get into it in earnest. But before we do that, I want to recommend that if anybody wants to get this book, they should get this catalog. Everything is at no charge to you because, first of all, in reality, everything we have is provided uh, by the uh auspices of the fact that God in grace has provided everything we'll ever need. 
A lot of people don't believe that. Um, and there are reasons why sometimes it seems we have less than we need in, in special and important ways, but that doesn't change anything. Now, this ministry has been around since uh, about 1950, and they always had the same um, policy that you see. Uh, let's see, where does it say it here? Publications near the bottom and recordings of the colonel's classes uh, of every, all the different stuff are available without charge or obligation from RB Theme Junior Bible Ministries. There's the info you need, which is P.O. Box address or phone number or um, website. And when you, if you call them, you would ask for this Bible studies catalog, doctrinal Bible studies catalog. And in it is a whole bunch of information, including the basics series. And that's about 14 books. And there they are in this tan, whatever colored box. And we are near the bottom of the second column there, divide divine guidance. And We've been through a whole bunch of these books already, including the one right after that, Prayer. Uh, we did that one third. So all of this material plus MP3s plus DVDs, you know, there's, I think, 11,000 hours plus of recorded data, um, as in audio and video. And then there are, I think, around 60 or 70 books. And everything's available at no charge. Why? Because some people can't afford to buy the stuff as much as they'd like it. And think about it on a grace basis. That wouldn't be fair because that means somebody's got positive volition. They want to know God better. They want to have a relationship with the God of the universe. And because they don't have the money, they can't do it. That wouldn't be fair at all. So um, that said, all these materials are available at no charge, and that's a really good deal. So um, I wish people would take advantage of it because it will improve their lot and it will improve ours as well. Because when a country is positive to Bible doctrine, it gets blessed. And our country is what's called a client nation to God. It's the current client nation. And for everybody who knows anything about the, well, there's a book here called The Divine Outline of History. Let me see, do I have the, the older one and the newer one? Here's the newer version. It looks like this. It says dispensations and the church. And for anybody who is aware of what dispensation we're in, we're in the church age. And this shows the six stages, starting with Gentiles and Israel. And then it goes to the hypostatic union and the church, we're in the church. And then later there's the tribulation and the millennium. So for anybody who wants to know how God's timetable is set up and where you are in the divine outline of history, you need to get divine the divine outline of history text. Again, no charge. Now. Um, what we normally do at the beginning here, we take a couple minutes to figure out what the heck is going on. This is, uh, an exegetical broadcast. That's what you do exegesis normally, sometimes. And even that word is unusual for many people. And so I say, if you're kind of new here, expect not to understand some of whatever it is we're talking about, but stick with it. Okay. Every week, twice a week. I put that board up. I show this board, which is my scroll that has something heavy duty to say, which I think is great that it came out on a scroll, that grace and the gospel are good news. But religion is not good news. And true or pure Christianity is not a religion. And if you think Christianity is a religion, then hear me out. And when I give a little bit more detail than that, I would tell you, for example, that Judaism is where Christianity comes from. 
And in its true and original form, it's not a religion either. So Judaism and uh, in its original form and Christianity in its original form, these are not man-made religions. And that's so important to understand because people think religion is something that's supposed to be good. And I tell you that religion is a counterfeit and it's not good. And I can get a lot of flack for that from people who would think that, hey, you know, I'm in a certain religion and it's good. And I tell them, oh, I beg to differ with you or you wouldn't be mad at me. Look, do not be misled or fooled. Religion is a counterfeit. It's bad. It's evil and wrong. I'm trying to get this over enough to where you can see it. Okay? Do not be misled or fooled. If religion is a counterfeit, then what's the real thing? What's the gospel? What is grace? What makes faith in Jesus Christ different and not a religion? Okay? Well, Acts 16, 31, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, John 3, 16, and Acts 4, 12 have something to say about all that. And I add here, why is the Bible different than or from all other holy books? Well, we're going to hear more about this and other objective truth here today, right now. So these boards that I have are, I'm trying to, to uh, emphasize and repeat important information every week when we start because it can't be overemphasized that in Christianity you have a, a Messiah that came from Judaism, Mashiach, and it in both basically Greek and Latin became the Christos. And we in English call it Christ or Messiah. Even that word, Mashiach, became Messiah. And we're put into union with Christ and filled with the Holy Spirit if we do what we're supposed to do. You may ask, well, what are we supposed to do? So I just tell you that, look, um, if you ever heard about Christ, like at Christmas time or at, at what they call Easter, resurrection, there's a story that this baby was born and was different than everybody else, born without a sin nature, without Adam's original sin, and therefore not having the Lord Jesus Christ, did not have an old sin nature in every cell of his body as we do. Okay, that's why the virgin birth, in case you ever wondered, why the virgin birth anyway? Who cares? I even said when I was little, when I was five or 10, oh, I don't care if he was born from a virgin. Let's say that. Uh, that Joseph was the father and Mary then was no longer a virgin. I thought, well, that'd still be okay. You could still believe in Jesus and wouldn't that be okay? Well, that'd be okay for people, but God said, no, it has to be the Christ child, which means Christos in <clears throat> Greek and Hebrew. Excuse me. I need to take a swig of my uh, Pellegrino and lime. Cheers. There we go. Clear the throat. So um, God said that since everybody is born spiritually dead, and um, we can see that in uh, Romans, if you don't know those passages, I think it's Romans 3.23 and 6.23. Let me take a quick check, okay? Because we'll read this now as part of our introduction. Uh, let me grab my floating table here. Grab my New American Standard where I have lots of notes and go over to, if you will, with me, Romans 3.23, where it's mentioned. Check this out. This is pretty serious. And then I think it's 6.23. 3.23 says, um, well, let me start with justification by faith in Christ, which is what we're talking about, right? That's starting at Romans 3.21. It says, but now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God through faith in Christ uh, for all those who believe, 
For there is no distinction, meaning between Jew or Gentile. Even the Gentiles could believe. Here we go. <laughs> Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and fall or fallen short of the glory of God. And then it continues. Here's important stuff. Verse 24. Being justified as a gift by God's grace, his grace, capital H, his, through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. And let me see uh, what happens at chapter 6. So if you go to Romans chapter 6. Ah, yes, also verse 23, as I mentioned, 323 and 623. Check this out. Romans 6.23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free, and it's circled, free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let me show you that verse. It is circled. And right there, verse 23. See that part? For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. All right. So uh, and you can see I've got a whole bunch more notes. Uh, I actually took the exegesis of Romans and um, I had it with Dr. Harold Honer. So that all happened before he passed away. Um, I'll show you something that I got here. You might get a kick out of it. It was my birthday recently, and here's Dr. Daniel B. Wallace. Uh, you might like his headgear there. That's pretty funny. Senior Research Professor, New Testament Studies. And again, this is from Dallas Theological Seminary. And it's got, look, his favorite courses to teach. Let's see if I can show you that. Um, oh, yeah, you're going to laugh when you see this. Honors Greek, first year Greek on steroids, exegesis of Romans. We were just looking at these two passages, advanced Greek grammar, New Testament textual criticism, and especially internships training the next generation of Christian scholars. Uh, interesting tidbits. Almost flunked Greek in college. Bought a house for a buck for one dollar and lived in it during his master of theology years. Fourth generation California naturalized Texan. Discovers and photographs New Testament manuscripts all over the globe. Taught himself Greek using the textbook he had written after encephalitis took away much of his memory. Fan of BMW, a.k.a. Break My Wallet Automobiles. And his birthday is June 5th. All right, so that's Dr. Dan. And want another shot. <laughs> They sent me Dan Wallace's favorite recipe, Patty, his wife. Patty's totally decadent quiche Lorraine. And it's got the formula. And there's a happy birthday from Dr. Dan um, riding a donkey. Hope you enjoy your birthday with a sample of this Nouvelle quiche prize. That's funny. Instead of a Nobel prize. And that's from the uh, whatever that's called, the alumnus department. You can say A-L-M-B-D or A-L-B-D card, alumnus birthday card. <laughs> so I like this shot of Dr. Dan. Yeah, here we go. Uh, instead of uh, uh, let there be peace, let him enjoy quiche. <laughs> All right. So anyway, crazy aside there that I had not planned on. That's why I had to go get it. But the main thing was we were looking at Romans 6, well, Romans 3.23 and 6.23. And it proves my point. If only people would believe the Bible. The Bible. Get it? Believable. The Bible. Very nice. There you go. Uh, so, um, that was no extra charge as well, all of that. But the main reason that we looked at the Romans passage was because 
Back to our board. Where is my board? We are looking at the fact that, as I mentioned, Adam's original sin is imputed to every member of the human race at birth. And therefore, we have in us the old sin nature. And by faith alone in Christ alone, we can have a relationship again. We've never had it actually in our lifetime up until then. But meaning mankind can have a relationship with God, the God of the universe, the creator even of man. Um, by faith alone in Christ alone. At that moment, you are placed into union with Christ or Messiah and filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, Adam's original sin that's still in every cell of our body, the old sin nature, is no longer dominating us and controlling our very lives. Instead, we have an option to be filled with the Spirit. So at the moment of salvation, all that happens. But shortly thereafter, you sin again, whether you know it or not. And if you're not an expert in homardiology, then you're not even sure it, which sins are sins and truly a sin. So you'll learn about that later. So, but the point is, sooner than later, you commit a personal sin or sins. And when you do, you're back under the control of your old sin nature. You need to rebound. That was one of our books that we read. First John 1 9 is the verse. If we name, claim, cite, admit, or acknowledge our sin or sins, he, God, capital H, is faithful and just, he's righteous, to cleanse us of our sin or sins and all unrighteousness. That means our confessed sin and the all unrighteousness. How about the sins we committed that we didn't even know were sins? He cleanses us of that too. Why? Because he can. Why can he? Because Christ paid for him, paid for every one of those sins on the cross. And so that's in a short summary, how it works. Okay, so as usual at this moment, we take the time to prepare ourselves to study whatever it is that we're up to each night. And tonight it's going to be our new book, Divine Guidance. And we're going to start at the beginning. And so we're gonna take a moment now of silent prayer to prepare ourselves for the study of God's word in earnest and seriously, okay? So, and we'll continue with some other important stuff. And I, let me think, I'll, I'll probably bring some things. I'll go get them right now. So without further ado, let's take a moment and pray. Let us pray. Once again, Heavenly Father, um, we come to your throne of grace and we thank you for the fact that we can have fellowship with you. We can have a relationship with you by faith alone in Christ alone. And that uh, at that very moment of salvation, we are placed in an eternal relationship with you. Um, from our standpoint, it's everlasting. It starts right at that moment of salvation and it goes on forever and ever and ever. And it is a part of your eternal life. And so we can even call it that, although we have a beginning, but we would have, and, and our souls have no ending. And for those who do not place their faith in Christ during this lifetime, their souls will also have no ending. They will also continue to live forever, but separate from you, apart from you, in the lake of fire. And that will all happen in the future after we have the great white throne judgment at which time all unbelievers will be judged and then brought together with all the previous uh, dead. All the dead will be gathered and all of the fallen angels and Satan and all the unbelievers will be cast into the lake of fire forever and ever and ever. Thank you that that does not have to be the case for each one of us, that we each may specifically and um, personally ask you for salvation and to have a relationship with you and to learn about you as we're going to do tonight, how we can have divine guidance. We thank you for the beginning of this new book. And we ask that you would help us to understand all of these things, that we would have um, very clear 
as it's the word is used perspicacity a clear understanding of exactly what it is you want us to know and what is in the scriptures and why it's all so important so we thank you for all these things and ask them as always Bashem Yeshua HaMashiach translated in Christ's name amen all right translated from the Hebrew so uh, I'll add this again um, very nice <laughs> I like to use uh, some of Len's statements sometimes uh, more than once uh, at the appropriate time. So um, we will now begin in earnest, as it says here. If you can't read it, it's right there. In earnest. The intro and on we go. So let's take a look at our text if you have it. If you don't, just uh, listen along. Um, our new book, Divine Guidance, I think it's book number, uh, I didn't write it down here, did I? It's either book number 11, yeah, Basics Book 11, I think. Um, so we will start now with not the financial policy and not the contents, but we'll go to the preface. And I will read to you here um, a couple of things. In fact, I'll put it on the screen so that you can see what it says here. Before you begin your Bible study, if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, be sure you have named your sins privately to God the Father. And there is our verse that I mentioned, 1 John 1, 9. If we name, claim, cite, admit, or acknowledge, that's the Greek word homologeo translated here inac uh, inaccurately and anacr uh, an I can't say it. Uh, and let me see, inaccurately and acronistically. No wonder I couldn't say all that. Um, confess is really homologeo. So if we name, claim, cite, admit, or acknowledge our known sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our known sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That would be unknown or forgotten sins. And that's 1 John 1, 9. Uh, you will then be in fellowship with God, filled with the Holy Spirit, and ready to learn Bible doctrine from the Word of God. And now John 4, 24 says, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in the filling of the Spirit and biblical truth. Okay, absolute truth, aletheia in Greek. Uh, if you have never personally believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, the issue is not naming your sins. The issue is faith alone in Christ alone. He who believes in the Son has eternal life, but he who does not obey the command to believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. When you see things in brackets, by the way, that means that there has been some exegetical addition, um, a let's call it help, a translation help, um, a way that some extra words help us to understand clearly the meaning of what that verse is conveying, <laughs> sometimes in a, like a bigger expanded form. Uh, we often call that an expanded translation, um, and there are a couple of different ways you can say that as far as an expanded translation. D different words that help us to understand that we've added words that are not in the Greek or Hebrew in the original biblical text, but we've added meaning that, it, um, what's the right word to say, that expands that um, helps us to understand the, the details of what the shorter version, the shorter rendition actually means. And that's extrapolation, you pull out. And by the way, that X, like exegesis is, to, is out or from, out from, to pull from, pull out from bunch of weird ways to say it and uh, exegetes often talk like this if it sounds funny it's because we're trying to really uh 
I want to say Amplify. There's one called the Amplified Bible. Trying to explain. By the way, an Amplified Bible will do the same thing. Uh, let's see what 1 John 1 9 looks like from my Amplified Bible. This is the one that I have had the longest in my life, this Bible. Um, and you can see here, that means I carried it around a lot because the sides are worn. Isn't that interesting? That happened. Um, when we go to, um, to 1 John 1, 9, I'm going to show you what an amplified version does to the words that we just read. And I think that's really good because, um, wow, I forgot how long this is. Now, you look at this and you'll see there's a lot of writing all over the place because I had this Bible for a very long time till about 1989, I think, before I got another one. And there in the green is our verse. And it says, now look how many things are in brackets and how much is added in, you know, little sections. If, and that's a three there to say third, third class condition, maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. But if, and let's say we do, we freely, it adds, admit that we have sinned and confess and see, look how it confess um, the word there. I, I put above it, name sins, homo legeo. See, I tried to put the Greek in there in English letters. If we, uh, if we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he is faithful and just. And then look at this big uh, addition true to his own nature and promises, and will forgive our sins, and then it's in parentheses, dismiss our lawlessness, and continuously cleanse us from all, circled there, unrighteousness, everything not in conformity uh, to his will in purpose, thought, and action. So you can see that's a pretty bloviated version, uh, and that's why this Bible is called the Amplified Bible, it really expands and does a pretty good job of still doing it all in one book. Look at this. I got this on Leap Day in 1976, February 29th. Never noticed that. It's Leap Day of 1976. And, um, and this is what it's called. The Amplified Old and Amplified New Testaments from Zondervan. And so uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in this Bible. It's definitely seen some use. And I'm happy for it because uh, it just tells me how much time I've redeemed. And it's exciting. We'll talk about more stuff uh, as we redeem the time tonight. Now, uh, so as it says in our preface there, we saw 1 John 1, 9, an expansion, and then John 4, 25. And here's the last part down here. If you have never personally believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, the issue is not naming your sins. The issue is faith alone in Christ alone. And that John 3, 36, he who believes. Oh, guess what? I don't have my phone off but I do now. Sorry about that. Constantly getting weird calls and some good ones too, but certainly weird ones. We'll talk about that. Oh yeah, I hear a comment from Lynn. That's a well-worn Bible. Yeah, it's got a lot of writing in it too. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> excuse me. So at the bottom there, he who believes in the Son has eternal life but he who does not obey the command to believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides in uh, on him. John 3, 36. Okay, so that's the preface. Now, on the next page, also these pages are still not numbered because it's the beginning of the book. On the next one, we have three verses there that both RB theme junior and RB theme the third. Let me see if I can get this here right. Finally, 
Finally got it sort of centered. Um, both of them, Bob for 53 years and now RB theme the third, Bobby, always quote these three verses at the beginning of every class. Okay, Hebrews 4.12, 2 Timothy 3.16 and 17, and 2 Timothy 2.15. And here's what they say. The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, some of that funny English is a little bit along the lines of Elizabethan English. And uh, that's why it has those funny words like uh, needeth not and show thyself. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so what we do now is continue with the introduction. And I'll read that. And then we have Isaiah 58, 11. And by the way, uh, well, I'll just save it in, this first, in a second. Introduction. Every person who has received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is the personal representative of the Son of God. Remember, this book is called Divine Guidance, and we're going to see how you become, as a believer, a son of God and a personal representative, kind of an ambassador, if you will. So um, every person who has received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is the personal representative of the Son of God. He is called an ambassador for Christ, a witness, a priest. See, you're a priest if you're a believer. And finally, a believer. But whatever the title, one truth is clear. Just as Jesus Christ represents every believer at the right hand of the Father, so every believer represents the Son of God on earth. In order to represent him effectively, everyone who is born again must be guided by God. To this end, we have the promise. Now, we're going to look at Isaiah 58, 11, and the footnote says, all scriptures in this book are quoted from the New American Standard Bible, the NASB, unless otherwise noted. Verses cited from the King James Version, the KJV, are also, you know, they are so indicated. Bracketed commentary reflects amplification of the New American Standard Bible translation taught in Bible class lectures. And then in parentheses, it says available on MP3 CD from RB Theme Junior Bible Ministries, Houston, Texas. And they don't add that it's also available on DVD, which is something a lot of people don't pretty soon don't have anymore because it's old technology. Now, the verse is this, Isaiah 58, 11. I'll give you a second to get there if you want to. Um, and I know that uh, Len has a, in fact, I could read, well, I'm going to read it from the book. So that'll be, <clears throat> excuse me, that's going to be the New American Standard with a little bit uh, well, I guess not. None of the words in here are Elizabethan sounding, so it sound, still sounds like basic English. All right, so Isaiah 55, 11 reads like this in the New American Standard. And the Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your desire in scorched places and give strength to your bones, and you will be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. This is a promise. And before we go on to page two, I want to mention I pulled out two uh, notebooks of, well, I should say files from when I taught the first seven or so chapters of Isaiah starting on January 7th of 2004. And uh, I have two of these folders. That's here. You can see how fat this is. This is getting to be like 
a Bible, especially eight and a half by 11s. And then here's the second folder. And what I want you to see about this, talking about Isaiah, as you can see here, it keeps showing Isaiah. And it says, the prophet, the greatest of the prophets. And like here it says, week 51, you know, week 67, 76, 80 some. Uh, 90, you know, 90 some. Um, what we have here is Bible classes that I taught back around 2004 and five and six. And um, the passage we're looking at, Isaiah 58, 11, falls on this chart way over by the end up here let's see between 40 and 66 down here you can see see that isaiah 58 is a millennial section it's it's at the end prophetic messianic salvation deliverance and blessing and see this isaiah glory of god and his messiah and it shows uh, me from 2004 there. Consolation of God for salvation and condemnation of God for sin. And so it's from a period from uh, 740 BC to 680 BC. And so there's a lot here. Uh, I may eventually make this. I don't have video of it, but I have audio. And maybe one day I will try to make that um, available again so that you would be able to see what's going on. By the way, in the two or more years that I taught, I ended up only going to the seventh chapter. And the problem there is there are 66 chapters. So if it took two years to get through six, then it'd take another 20 years just to get through Isaiah. And that doesn't surprise me. By the way, you can see how these notes look. Uh, and it shows the date right down there, like March of 04. And, um, and then I would make notes on what we saw. And then I would discuss stuff about the Hebrew and, you know, important things. Why? Well, because Isaiah is the greatest prophet. You know, it, I always say he's the great prophet, the greatest of the prophets. So there is so much that I'd like to share with you, and we will see how far we get as the years go by because I may have to add more nights, you know, more classes than just the two that we do now. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So let's continue now uh, that we've looked at Isaiah 58, 11, which was a promise. And that promise is that we will be well taken care of. Now, page two says, divine guidance is the doctrine of determining the will of God for your life. Divine guidance. We saw last week, I think I wrote it. Let me see what I wrote because um, I take pictures of the screens. Ah, yes. On uh, A week ago tonight, I put new year, new book, new guidance. Divine Guidance Basics Book 11, Just What We Need in Time for 2022. And I think you can, let me see if I can make that better right there. There you can see our board for last week. Just What We Need in Time for 2022. And now we see what that says here, page two. Divine guidance is the doctrine of determining the will of God for your life. In the Bible, the Greek word for will is, well, we always pronounced it thelema because it's a long E, the ama, but the accent is on the thelema. So that's kind of funny, thelema. 
When thelema is used with reference to God's will for the believer, Romans 2.18 and Ephesians 1.1, 1, 1, it refers to the purpose or plan he designed for every believer in eternity past. Footnote two, uh, there's a book, The Plan of God, and that is very important for you to read if you haven't read it, because what this says here is a very short summation or um, uh, synopsis of the entire book called The Plan of God. It's only about 36 pages. It's kind of like this. It's a thin little book. What is this one? This one is 30 some pages too. So the plan of God. All right, we continue on the uh, next paragraph. One of the greatest dilemmas any believer faces is, how can I know God's will? How can I be guided by him? What is God's will for me in some crisis or difficulty or problem in life? Throughout scripture, believers are continually exhorted to know the will of God. By the way, in the beginning here, last week we saw this in detail. We looked at the, let's call it the table of contents. And it mentions here in the beginning, mandates of divine guidance. Submit to the will of God. Know the will. See, what is the will of God? Grow in the word of God. All this is going to be amplified. See how tonight we've been looking at an amplified Bible and, you know, noticing things in detail. That's where we are. Um, and here's Ephesians 5, 17. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. That statement right there requires that we get into the word of God and figure it out. A Christian who does not know God's will is declared to be a fool. One of the most detrimental failures in the Christian life is lack of wisdom or understanding. In Hebrew, the two words, kakma and bina, wisdom and understanding. Divine guidance is the communication of divine will through divine revelation, the word of God. Therefore, it is obvious that divine guidance must be based on the Bible itself, for the word of God is the thinking of Christ. And here's 1 Corinthians 2.16, and it says, For who has known the mind, and in brackets the thinking, in other words, of the Lord, that he should instruct him? But we have the mind, again, that word is probably nous uh, in Greek there in 1 Corinthians 2, thinking. Noose in Greek, but we have the mind of Christ. Today, the only way you can know what the will of God is for your life is to hear and understand Bible doctrine. In Romans 8, 14, we are introduced to the Holy Spirit as the major factor in divine guidance because the Holy Spirit is the teacher. It says, for all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God, Romans 8, 14. And then, I'm going to show you two things. There's no divine guidance apart from knowing the word of God and being controlled by the ministry of God, the Holy Spirit. Together, these basics of the spiritual life form the cornerstone for the three mandates of divine guidance. And those three mandates are what I just read to you from the table of contents. Submit to the will of God, know the will of God, and grow in the word of God. So we're going to see that starting here on page three with the mandates of divine guidance, those three mandates. And what I wanted to show you was, again, that on our board, when we are believers, either at the very moment of salvation, we become a believer, we're in union with Christ and filled with the Holy Spirit. This is forever and ever and ever. This bottom circle is temporal. You can get out of fellowship. One of the really great ways to draw this that I neglected to do at the time I made up this chart is instead of a circle, it can be just broken lines of a circle, you know, because this one, you stay in that circle, but this one, you can get out of it. And that's what, what we were just reading, that 
We need to be led by the Spirit of God, Romans 8, 14. By the way, so we did Romans 3, 23, Romans 6, 23, and now Romans 8, 14. Um, Romans 8, 14 says, we all who are being led by the Spirit of God, and that's what we're supposed to be, filled with the Spirit, these are the sons of God. Because, of course, you can't be a son of God and not have at least part of the time, the filling of the spirit. So mandates of divine guidance. Again, tonight's new text. Romans 121 about submitting to the will of God. Here it is, Romans 12. Uh, I know I said it wrong, right? Romans 12, 1. I think I said 12, 21 or something. Forget it. Start fresh. Romans 12, 1. <laughs> there we go. Uh, what, what's that expression? Strike. Yeah, strike my last. I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, and the word there is paristomy in Greek, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, and in brackets, which is your spiritual service of worship. Again, that's Romans 12.1. Now, here we go with a little bit of exegesis. By the way, for those of you who don't have the book, there's the verse, and you see the Greek in the second line, paristemi. And look, uh, the next uh, paragraph, Pre present in this verse is the same Greek word, paristemi, also found in Romans 6.13. It means to place yourself under orders to God or to submit to the will of God. Now, what I want to say about that is, there's two words put together, para and histomy, and it becomes uh, conjoined. The av, para, goes, and the histomy, which has a rough breather over the yoda, meaning it's not istemi, but histomy, a rough <coughs> breather, okay? That rough breather to present is really to place alongside and to stand firm. So I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to, to present yourself to be, put yourself alongside and stand firm. And then it says, so in other words, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God. So there you are standing there as a believer filled with the spirit, which is your spiritual service of worship. That's a little bit of detail. And as it said here, to place yourself under orders to God or to submit to the will of God. When we understand this, we know that this is not a, quote, one-shot decision to submit to God that guarantees submission forever after. See, it doesn't work that way. Submission is an ongoing chain of decisions throughout the course of our Christian life. And if you read, if you have the book, and if you didn't, don't, don't have the book, notice that ongoing chain, ongoing there is italicized for emphasis. So we do not decide what the will of God is for us. Rather, he decides his will for us and leads, leads us step by step when we are in fellowship. And that's John 15, verse 16. So we get led. Step by step. We must be in fellowship with God to be guided by God. The only way to be in fellowship is to be forgiven of our sins and purified from all wrongdoing through rebound, 1 John 1, 9. The grace method by which the believer in carnality regains fellowship and spirituality by naming personal sins privately to the Father. Footnote. There's a book, a basics book called Rebound and Keep Moving. And I forget what number it is. Um, here, I'll look it up right here and tell you. Rebound and Keep Moving is book number five. And I'll show it to you right here. In the basics books, see, five damn, Plan of God, Trinity, Slave Market, Ascend, The Barrier, Rebound and Keep Moving. So all of these books are available and it really is a great thing that we can build. You know, and let's see, if I go to the, the books under R, 
see it'll show pictures of the books uh the little color uh deals and we are in divine guidance that's why the thing is right here so that you can see divine guidance that's this book the one that we're in the divine guidance is the doctrine through which the believer determines god's will for his life by knowing and applying the word of god you know what to think what to do and where to go according to god's desires now if you get alphabetically all the way over to r there's rebound and keep moving and that is this one right here what we're talking about right now rebound and keep moving and there's the copy of the book rebound and keep moving is the key to the christian way of life or christ-centered life after salvation the sin nature remains a relentless adversary tempting the believer to sin and live in carnality when the believer sins fellowship with god is lost spiritual progress ceases uh, that hopefully is temporary meaning all you have to do is rebound first john 1 9 and you're back in fellowship and you can be filled with the spirit and continue yet by citing his sins of the father the believer is empowered to resume his advance in god's plan this rebound procedure we call it the rebound technique defeats guilt over past failures and opens the door to serving the lord in the freedom of grace so that's you know i'm just trying to what would that be called dovetail and segue all these different books together for anybody who would be new and say man that sounds like a bunch of good books you know they teach all these technical things and explain them by the way in an easy way to understand it's still so technical there are so many verses in each i mean look at this book in pages two and three where we are if you look at page two there's all these verses okay ephesians corinthians romans then you go over to this side, more Romans, 1 John 1, 9, 1 Corinthians 3. You know, it, there's so much that, like I said, you have to keep putting it together. And that's what in Isaiah, where it says, uh, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. We're just putting it all together. And it's something to be encouraged about because as we do that, we grow. As we grow, we get blessed. Speaking of blessed, I got a new guitar today. Didn't show up. I ordered it. You say, wait a minute. Didn't you already order five new guitars? Yeah. So this is a sixth one. So I've gone from three new guitars to seven new guitars to eight new guitars to nine new guitars because uh, I keep adding guitars. And you must say, you're crazy. No, I'm a guitarist. I digress. All right. So we continue. Um, we do not decide what the will of God is for us. Rather, he decides his will for us and leads us step by step when we are in fellowship, John 15, 16. We must be in fellowship with God to be guided by God. Remember, we read all this. The only way to be in fellowship is to be forgiven our sins uh, and purified from all wrongdoing, this bears repeating, through rebound, the book we just looked at, uh, the grace method by which the believer in carnality regains fellowship and spirituality by naming his sins personally, you know, uh, personal sins privately to God the Father. And that footnote, footnote rebound and keep moving. And here's the verse. Oh, let's look at the brackets and stuff. So you see how it's amplified from the Greek into English with extra words. If we homologeo, if we confess, which is really, as again, I've said, anachronistic, it's a word that that used to mean confess, but you can't confess to God because he already knows. So if we name or claim or cite or admit or acknowledge, like it says, name and acknowledge, our sins, those are our known ones, obviously. We can't name ones we didn't know we did. He is faithful and righteous. In other words, he is just still. To forgive our, what kind of sins? Our known sins. That's one, is just forgive our known sins. And to cleanse us or purify us, sanctify, you know, it's that word, hagias, from all unrighteousness. Now you say, wait a minute, what's that? Well, that unrighteousness has to do with how about unknown or forgotten sins? So there's an amplified version too. 
not as long as the one that we saw in the Amplified Bible, but nevertheless. If there is any sin in your life as a Christian, you are said to be out of fellowship. Remember, uh, instead of being in this bottom circle, you're always the top one. But all of a sudden, you're out of fellowship. You're no longer in this one. Where are you? Well, through sin, you're controlled by your old sin nature. And so, um, let me see, where, where am I reading that? Ah, so you are in status quo, you're out of fellowship, carnality. And that's 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1 through 4, King James Version. Um, but we're, we're not going to read that. We're just going to keep going. You can take a note if you don't have the book, or if you have a book, you can put a little note right there, an asterisk. You want to look up 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1 to 4, that say you are in status quo carnality. You're out of fellowship, and you need to get back, rebound into that bottom circle. By the way, for anybody who would have been with me for these 187 uh, exegetical classes, they would have gone through the whole, everything I've said, all those books. Uh, the Rebound and Keep Moving book, the Plan of God book, you know, uh, any of these books, we've already covered them. And by finally getting to this book, number 11 in the series, we can review and revert back to and, and, and uh, quote these old books. And like I said, so it says, um, you are in status quo carnality, 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1 through 4. And as long as you are carnal, it's impossible for you to be guided by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, one of the first steps in divine guidance is the use of 1 John 1, 9 to rebound. If you're going to do the will of God, you must be controlled by the Spirit of God, for it is impossible to do the will of God apart from the filling of the Holy Spirit. Our board back here. Submission to the will of God begins with the filling of the Holy Spirit. Quote, be, and then brackets, habitually filled with the Spirit, Ephesians 5, 18b. When you acknowledge your sins to God, he forgives your known sins and purifies you instantly and completely from your unknown sins. You are restored to fellowship. Immediately, your soul is controlled again by God, the Holy Spirit, and you are in status quo spirituality. The only deterrent to the Spirit's control is sin. Therefore, naming your sins is the only prerequisite for the filling of the Spirit. The mandate of submission to the will of God is stated in Romans 6.13. We went to 6.23, but not 6.13. So I'm backing up here <coughs> because I want to mention that where it said you are in status quo or status quo carnality, 1 Corinthians 3 verses 1 to 4, here the mandate, and all of this is dealing with the mandates of divine guidance and submitting to the will of God. And so here it says the, the mandates, am I doing this right? The mandate of submission to the will of God is stated in Romans 6.13. And here it is, quote, and do not go on presenting, and there's that word again, paristomy, presenting or standing alongside the members of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present, there's the word again, paristomy, yourselves to God as those alive from the dead, meaning you became a believer, you are born again, you are spiritually alive now instead of born spiritually dead and under the condemnation of Adam's original sin and having the old sin nature control you, every sin of your, I mean, every uh, cell of your body, sin in every cell and your members. So, uh, but present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God, meaning the members of your body, Romans 6, 13. Now the mechanics of submission to God's will is to confess, okay? So the, one of the mechanics, 1 John 1, 9, name your sins. These are simply two sides of the same coin. Submission to the will of God is not demonstrated in one particular moment or in one particular incident, but is rather 
having the will of God as a consistent rule for your life. Submission is electing God's will to be final even before you know what his will is. How's that for a weird thought? It's not a question of being willing to do one thing. It's a question of being willing to do anything. See, not one thing, but anything. It's impossible to submit to the will of God without the filling of the Holy Spirit and impossible to know the will of God until you know the word of God. Now, let's go ahead and Finish up with pages four and five here. I can pull this off. We'll, we'll do knowing the will of God. So tonight we will have covered submit to the will of God and know the will of God. And then next week we'll, well, I might be able to get growing the word of God done as well. All right, let's see. We'll just go. Continuing page four, know the will of God. And do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good, and in brackets, divine good, which you can, it says, see page 12, footnote 17, so there's a lot to read there. We won't do that now. But this is, uh, again, from Romans 12, too. Um, so I'll start. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good, divine good, and acceptable, well-pleasing, and perfect or complete. That's the Greek word teleos there. Um, and uh, I think asebea is the, uh, and acceptable. Uh, it's something close to that if it's not asebea. Uh, Romans 12, 2. Now, I just want you to see Romans 12, 2 there. Do you see the brackets? that which is good, divine good, and acceptable, well-pleasing, and perfect, meaning complete, teleo or teleos. All right, we keep reading. Along with this verse, every command from the negative standpoint, do not be, and from the positive standpoint, do you not know, is an encouragement to know the word of God, the will of God, and the plan of God, and is, therefore, essential in following the mandates of guidance. So you got to know the will of God. Since the Bible is the source of the known will of God, whether by direct statement or by deduction from doctrine, knowledge of his will is based on an understanding of the word of God. Maximum perception of doctrine, techniques, and promises results in the ability to be guided by God. To settle questions and problems not specified in the Bible, the believer must go from the known to the unknown. We have a perfect illustration in al algebra. X equals the unknown factor, but X cannot be determined without known factors around it. While X is unknown, as soon as we place known factors around it, we can determine the meaning of X. For example, if 2X equals 10, what is X? Answer, X is five. The reason we know that X equals five is because we have known factors in the picture. Known factors determine the meaning of X. So in front of X, you have a two. So that means there's gonna be X times two and that that equals 10. So X times two equals 10, 10 divided by two equals five. Okay, now if it would have said X squared equals 10, that would be something else because that would be X times X equals 10. And that would be, a, a what do they call that? Like an animal of a different color, a beast of a different color. <laughs> and so you'd have to figure that Something times something equals 10. And that's more complicated of a number, right? Because what times what equals 10? Well, I mean, I should say what squared equals 10, where a number times itself equals 10. And that is going to be um, a number with a decimal point after because it has to add up to 10 
and it probably won't be perfect either. Okay, because it's not divisible or multipliable to come out to 10 as a whole number. Anyway, that's a math thing, no extra charge that is not in the book. But you get it that if 2x equals 10, x equals 5. Known factors determine the meaning of x. Continuing, the known factors as far as divine guidance is concerned are all found in the scripture. Get it? Known factors, known verses, known doctrines. With the known factors in the Bible, you can understand the mind and the will of God in every detail of your life. For example, a known factor is found in 2 Corinthians 6, 14, where you are told, quote, do not be bound together with unbelievers, end quote. This brings up the matter of guidance in marriage. Whom should you marry? When should you marry? What kind of person should you marry? And there are many other questions involved. And now footnote five says, a study of the doctrine of marriage may be ordered from RB Theme Junior Bible Ministries on MP3 CD as noted on the back inside book cover. So um, the back book cover here has the information where to order stuff, you know, including the phone number, like I showed you before. Website, all that kind of stuff. And everything's available and at no charge. So um, that's uh, footnote four. And we read through all of that. So along with this verse, every command from the negative standpoint, do not be, and from the positive standpoint, do you not know, is an encouragement to know the word of God, the will of God, and the plan of God, and is therefore essential in following the mandates of guidance. Okay, you got to know before you can do. And if you're being guided, you better know something. That's how you're guided. Since the Bible is a source of the known will of God, whether by direct statement or by deduction from doctrine, knowledge of his will is based on an understanding of the word of God. I'll drink that. Cheers. Maximum perception of doctrine and techniques and promises results in the ability to be guided by God. To settle questions and problems not specified in the Bible, the believer must go from the known to the unknown. Aha. So to settle questions and problems not specified in the Bible, uh-oh, we get that X factor again. They had that as a TV show for music and stuff. The people that have that je ne sais quoi, the uh, something special. So, uh, let's see. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Let's start again at whom then should you marry? The answer must be determined by a combination of known factors. Beginning with, you know, you got to be filled with the spirit and figure it out. There are many things. The Bible directly mandates to be God's will, or conversely, not to be God's will. Other things not directly stated must be determined by a rational conclusion from doctrine resident in our soul. That's why you got to still be filled with the Spirit. In this way, we're able to determine at any point and under every circumstance exactly what is God's will. But remember the principle. You cannot know the will of God apart from knowing the Word of God. Likewise, it's impossible to do the will of God without the power to execute it, you know, to execute it. This power is provided by the filling ministry of God, the Holy Spirit. This is one of the reasons believers are exhorted to rebound, study the word of God daily, and expose themselves to Bible teaching as much as possible. Okay, page six, growing in the word of God, and we're going to go down to here and then we'll quit. Okay, here's 2 Peter 3, verse 18a. Okay, the first half. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace, okay, in the grace and knowledge. Grace is the sum total of the plan of God. 
If you are in the will of God, you are in the plan of God. When you're in the plan of God, you should do the will of God. A full knowledge of and compliance with the will of God cannot be acquired apart from the stability of spiritual growth and maturity. Divine guidance grows, uh, I'm sorry, divine guidance involves one step at a time. Each step must be growth and advance in the spiritual life. Actually, the three mandates of guidance cannot be separated for each is dependent upon the others. We must submit to the will of God through the filling of the spirit. We must know the will of God through the word and we must grow to spiritual maturity. That's the one we're in now, grow in the word of God. We must grow in and to spiritual maturity in order to do the will of God to the maximum. Failure to accomplish these three mandates through carnality, in other words, through living out of that bottom circle, the filling of the Holy Spirit, and ignorance and lack of spiritual growth prevents us from doing the will of God in our life. So how do you do the will of God in your life? Back to those three main sections. You submit to the will of God, and you know the will of God, and you grow. And then you can reverse it and say, you grow in the word of God, and then you know the word of God, and you submit to it. And by doing all that, you're probably going to be executing, you know, the will of God for your life. You know, or at least you have a major possibility and chance of doing so. All right, so we'll continue with categories of God's will for the individual believer. And what I want you to know right now is part of what we need to be doing right now that is very important in our country and in the world at large, you know, for the whole world, is we need to be acknowledging what the heck is going on out there. And unfortunately, a lot of people are not privy to some of the details and we're floundering and wondering, you know, how are we going to do the things that we need to do? Now, one of the things I want to point out is so World War III, more and new battles, many of them. Wow. So as I mentioned here, a few bonuses, no extra charge, some timely, healthy advice from one who has both expertise and experience. Um, I have expertise and experience in several areas. One of them is music. And you know, if you want to hear my music, you can go anywhere and put in my name and this Home With You title. And there are 12 songs and you don't have to pay for that either. You don't even have to pay for the CD if you want a CD. You may say, oh, I don't have a CD player. Oh, okay. Well then, if you can go on YouTube or if you have Spotify, Amazon, you know, any of those uh, Apple Music, well, all there's, I think there's 67 or some number like that, 70 some uh, music subscription services. You can hear my music. Okay, so there's something. And uh, how do I tie all this together? Again, dealing with areas of expertise and experience. In the music world, you can hear my expertise from that angle, okay, uh, from music that's available. No charge. And I get paid if you listen to it, so I love it. So please listen to your heart's content. 12 songs, if you listen to them all, um, I get some money in my pocket. So there. I even get some if you only listen to one. Should mention that. Smaller amount, of course. Um, but think about it. There are all these areas that we need to know about. Music, not so much. But how about other critical things like healthy advice? Well, healthy as in health or healthy as in this is good advice. It's good and healthy. You do this and uh, you'll have made good decisions and you'll be well off. Doesn't mean you'll not be sick. But when it comes to healthy and not being sick, I have expertise in that area too. And I want the, uh, the powers at YouTube and even Twitter uh, that be, the powers that be that watch 
to know that somebody of my caliber of education with a couple of doctorates worth of uh, coursework and specialties in areas that include music and science, you know, whether it's medicine and history and theology. And as I've mentioned in the past, theology is the queen of the sciences. So my doctor friends will tell you that uh, I often give them advice and they in turn give me information so that we can talk, okay? Here's one for you. This, if you didn't know what this is, is the Bible, not as in our regular Bible, but the Bible of pharmacy. And what do they do here? They quote, here's quotations. Look at all these footnotes. These are lipid derived uh, autocoids. And here are all the people who were involved in writing this article on um, mechanism of action, speaking of filling of the Holy Spirit. Now, if this is technical to you, like my theological stuff is, it's because my books are technical books. And so as you can see here, there is a lot of technical jargon that you need to understand so that receptor antagonists, for example, can be uh, in vivo and in vitro. Check that out. All of this information is to help you understand lipid-derived, as I mentioned, autocoids. Look, look at this stuff. See, I've had to, to look at these crazy um, books and formulas in the past just so that I can have conversations with my medical uh, folks. And now what you have, speaking of World War III, you have a war between the scientists and a war between the doctors and a war between the health organizations, speaking of healthy advice. And so tonight I wanted to mention to you some of people that are available out there that are obviously on, on sites. They haven't been blocked and uh, they have to justify themselves as I just did here to talk about healthy advice. But if you were to go on YouTube and look up a couple of doctors like uh, Dr. Uh, Sten Ekberg, that's E-K-B-E-R-G, um, who is a holistic doctor, and Mike Mutzel, who is not a medical doctor, but a master of science, and he consults with medical doctors. His wife is a doctor of chiropractic. And then there's even a, a real doctor again, uh, this one being a medical doctor, this one being a uh, professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School named, um, what's his first name? Uh, David Sinclair. And you can look these guys up on YouTube. And even me, I'm on there too. Um, but their YouTube videos are up. They have not been blocked. So the YouTube gods, you know, the attorneys and the people that block you, uh, they haven't been blocked. And a lot of what I have to say to you is coming directly from them. And so, like, I'm not connected to the goodies that I would recommend for you to learn about so that you can stay healthy. I don't get paid. You know, uh, I just recommend them because, A, I use them, and B, they are recommended to me by medical and other types of doctors. And they keep me from getting sick. You know, um, I haven't had a cold, a sore throat, the flu, you know, anything of that nature. Uh, nothing has blossomed out of me in over 20 years, meaning sometimes I get the, you know, the first stage 
where I get an inkling that I'm unwell. I don't feel good. Hmm. I'm starting to have a little bit of a sore throat or whatever. And when I do, then like you could go to the store and get a bottle of something or other, you know, to stop the sore throat from happening. Well, we've got pharmacies everywhere and they've got all kinds of products. And, and then you've got all the things that are going on, such as, you know, these, this public menace that we've had for a couple of years, where now everybody's having to deal with that and on various levels. And then all of a sudden you're not allowed to talk about it on the social media, you know, platforms, uh, because you get banned for saying something that they disagree with. Well, all I'm saying is a lot of people are disagreeing, whether they're medical doctors disagreeing with each other, whether they're lawyers and doctors fighting each other and the government and the world governments and the different countries. And as you've noticed, there've been a lot of changes lately. A lot of things have been changing. A lot of countries are changing their, uh, whatever you want to call it, requirements of things. And uh, we're in the middle of all that ourselves. And so when I say a bit of healthy advice, um, what I'm saying is you can do things to take care of yourself. And uh, there are things out there for you. And you should know about them. And in some cases, if I were to say certain things, all of a sudden they'll block me, right? So uh, I look at some of these things that I've noticed on YouTube that are available. Uh, one of them, for example, uh, is this N-acetyl L-cysteine, okay? N-A-C. What's that for? And how does that work with another product that's out there called quercetin? And see how it says cardiovascular support? Anyway, there are things like that. And I've told you before about my essential oils, Thieves, which you can get at a place like uh, Sprouts. And it'll say, instead of the name Thieves, because that's a proprietary name, they made it the same kind of thing. Let's call it a generic of it or something. And it's made by a company. Oh, Thieves is made by, um, and so you can look these up online too. Uh, one of them is called Young Living Essential Oils. And they're a good company with really great products. This other one is a company called Now. And that Now brand, um, they have, a, a, instead of calling it Thieves, they call it Nature's Shield. It's a good name, right? And I've shown you these products before. Anyway, what I'm saying is, you know, if somebody told you, hey, you should get enough sleep and get exercise and eat well, and in some cases you can add and take supplements, you know, things that'll help you out. One of the things that I wanted to do is figure out how to not have allergy problems. And up here, people generally have allergies from one thing or another. And the two things that get me, one of them's this time of year and one of them's around May. This time of year, um, it's juniper trees. They're kind of pine type trees, pine trees, and they are conifers. So they have little cone things that happen and they, um, they're, uh, what are they called? Perennials or whatever. They're not deciduous. They don't die. They're like evergreens, you know? So the junipers get me around this time of year normally. And, uh, and then around May there's cottonwoods and they get me. Well, guess what? Thanks to this kind of stuff that I use for allergies, and I'll uh, show you these couple more things. Um, my nutritionist friend and doctor said, get this, it's called dehist. Now think about it. It would be like for uh, antihistamine. So it's a decongestant histamine thing. And it's got that NAC that I told you about in it and that quercetin that I showed you, those two bottles. Well, they're in there, right there. There it is. And remember, I don't get paid for this. I just tell you that I take it. So you got vitamin C, quercetin dihydrate, stinging nettle, if you know what that is, and bromelain from pineapple. And there's that N-acetyl L-cysteine. And it's good stuff. Um, what it does is instead of my nose running all the time and I have to blow my nose or I have a hanky ready and it's just uh, drip, 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 the eyes, the nose, instead it dries you up. But it also helps you against other things that we won't mention by name. 
And uh, but it helps uh, some of these the parts that are in there, uh, the uh, quercetin and the NAC and all that. And so you know you want to be smart, like we were just saying about the divine guidance, and figure out things that are helpful that help you stay, whether you have allergies or whatever it takes, so that you can, like me, I'm having a great day and I'm here hanging out with you and happy as like Joe would say, please as punch to be there. By the way, you can pray for Joe Griffin in St. Louis area, St. Charles um, and his church, uh, Grace Doctrine Church. Uh, Joe ended up getting the uh, latest version, the Omicron uh, apparently, and I have uh, some cousins that have been sick lately that had that as well. And so uh, if you would uh, pray for them for me, you know, at the very end, we'll, we'll pull up the, my prayer board and talk about praying. And so, uh, like I said, they say that it's kind of inevitable that we're all going to get this, kind of like everybody gets a cold, everybody gets a flu, everybody gets a sore throat every once in a while. Well, that may be true for most people, but it doesn't have to be true for you. It's certainly not true for me. Um, as I say, I've been doing well for 20 years now. And the reason is I know a lot of these things about what to take and how much. And yet it's a balancing act too, you know? So even the doctors, you know how they do that? They experiment. They try stuff. Oh, got a note here. Uh, uh, Len says, Bonnie's brother got it too. You're talking about uh, Omicron, I believe? Um, and here's the other cool thing. Let's see what this one says. Doing better now. Awesome. Well, and so we want to uh, pray. You can put his name, his first name, so that I can say it in our uh, our prayers. Actually, I probably, I, I may uh, may not say the names. That way I keep some of them just as a, we'll call it a cluster of people that we're praying for. That everybody that has had any, any stuff, even not COVID-oriented, uh, can get better, you know, because you can still get other kinds of stupid illness. Allergies are what you know, one kind, and they are stupid. And um, it's been a couple of years now. I've been trying to get the uh, the I call it the cocktail. You know, how much of this? It's the recipe, and how much of that is it going to take to function well? And again, this is what we just read about. It's either in the Bible and you've got divine guidance or it's that stuff that's just not in the Bible and you've got to figure it out and then decide what to do. What's the best thing you can do? So it's fun, this divine guidance idea. And that's why I said a few bonuses, no extra charge. I wanted to get into several things here. So one of them again is, uh, and I'll, I'll show you this thing. This is called wellness formula that you can get at most health food stores. It's made by this company, Source Naturals. And uh, vitamin C plus over 30 herbs, vitamins, and nutraceuticals, or suticals, nutraceuticals. And uh, it's an immune support winner and uh, advanced daily immune support. So if I was starting to get a cold and I'm getting tired, instead of taking one a day of those, you dose on them. It's got a lot of garlic in it and stuff. Um, forget what else is in here. I'll tell you real quick. So it's got things like vitamin A, C, D3, uh, as a, uh, cola, calciferol, uh, calcium, zinc, uh, selenium. That's really important and good for you. Copper, a certain amount of that. And that's good too. In micrograms, you know, like 150, so a tiniest, tiniest bit of sodium garlic bulb, Propolis extract, echinacea root extract, elderberry, uh, astralgus root, and a few other weird things, isatis root, uh, some cinnamon bark extract, uh, citrus bioflavonoid complex. You know, it's all that good stuff. Um, and it's no big deal, you know, and there's all these weird, you know, like, ginger root, um, stuff that you've never heard of. There's cayenne fruit, coptis rhizome extract. And um, the bottom line, see it says here, suggested use, take three tablets a day to maintain state of wellness. If your immune system needs added support, unlock the power of wellness 
with three tablets every three hours. Do not exceed 15 uh, tablets a day for maximum of seven days, you know, seven consecutive days. And then it says all that stuff like this has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Well, this is what I got to say, and it's great. It's fun. If you go and check out a guy like Mike Mutzel, M-U-T-Z-E-L, and he has something called um, High Intensity Health, H-I-H, and it's all on you know YouTube or on the website, you know, websites and stuff. Mike Mutzel, he's a good guy. Um, Sten Ekberg, that's like Stan, only it says with an E, S-T-E-N. I think he's from Sweden. Uh, Ekberg, E-K-B-E-R-G. And he is a holistic doctor, chiropractor. He was an Olympic uh, triathlete, you know, for Sweden. Um, you know, he's a really good guy. These guys help you learn about stuff that's good for you and stuff that's not good for you, you know, in your diet and how to, you know, how to do things like sleep, how much and when, especially Mike Mutzel, guy, he gets so into that from a scientific standpoint, how when you go to sleep late, it's not as good as when you go to sleep early. And then they talk about intermittent fasting and different kinds of stuff like that. All of this is good and healthful. And like I said here, healthy advice. And there isn't much to argue about it. The only times you get in trouble and argue is when people argue if you should do this or do that. And, you know, specifically it has to do with all of the stuff that's been going on legally and, you know, with all of the, the brouhaha of the media, press, guidance, et cetera. Well, we, we want divine guidance to super uh, intend, if you want to say that, to superintend over all matters, starting from a biblical perspective, as we saw today, where you get to know the will of God and you, what are the three parts, as I said them again, you know, the, the will of God, you, that you submit to it, that you know it, and that you grow in the word of God. These are the kinds of things that will help you to do well. And we're in a new year and we got this divine guidance that, you know, we're talking about and you want to do well because as I mentioned, this business of World War III, you know, um, there are many, there are more and new battles, many of them. Look at what they're thinking about with um, the, the different hotspots in the world. In the Bible in, I think it's Matthew is it uh, 624? I'll give it a look. Or is it 24-6? I think it's 24-6. Let me go there. Matthew, yeah, that makes sense. Matthew 24-6. We're getting there. Matthew 23-24. And you will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. Let me stop that and back it up. And you will be hearing of wars. Those are hot wars. And rumors of wars, cold wars. See that you are not frightened for those things must take place. But the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And in various places, there will be famines and earthquakes and blah, blah, blah. Well, this is in the uh, predicted return of the king in the Olivet Discourse and um, chapters 24 and 25 of Matthew are real weird and interesting chapters because they deal with things that go on in the millennium. And, uh, or I should say, uh, I'm sorry, but right before the millennium in, uh, the, the tribulation, but they're tribulational and millennial things. And, but still it's true. What I just read and said about that, there will be wars and rumors of wars. And we've got that going on and it says, do not be frightened. So don't freak out about the stores and the food and the stock market, and your job, and disease, and all this stuff. 
excuse me, just do what you need to do and get as much wisdom and discernment, kakma and bina in Hebrew, wisdom and discernment, so that you are objectively thinking what to do as you make decisions, daily decisions about all the stuff that's going on. And as I mentioned, if you have questions or want more information, of course, there's my email, philippe at faxandmusic.com. And of course, snail mail if you want to write. But I encourage you and uh, exhort and implore you to do what you can to stay on top of things. It's the beginning of a new year. There's going to be some really great stuff going on. And there'll be some really stupid stuff going on. Happens every year. I'm starting out with a real bunch of good stuff. And uh, I won't give you the details online, but you got to know there's a lot of good stuff going on. And see, I even get a thank you from Len. And uh, my always answer to that, uh, you're welcome and thank you. Because I'm ecstatic and happy that, you know, I'm able to do this and have anybody be there and listen. And again, the most important thing I can encourage you, besides you know getting together and doing this, uh, dealing with divine guidance there, is my prayer board that says, if you want to pray, at least pray in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Spirit so that your prayer gets heard. Because otherwise, your prayer doesn't make it much past the ceiling. And the first thing about objective, you know, prayer uh, prerequisites and protocol, you know, how do you pray? Rebound. You got to be in fellowship when you pray. So by making sure you're filled with the spirit, then you give God thanks. Then you have intercessory prayer where you pray for people like Bonnie's brother and, um, and uh, Bonnie and her family right? And Len and everybody. And you start praying also for the, whatever church you may be going to, the pastor and the church and the missions and missionaries and their families. And then government, of course, and you pray for everybody, the ones you like and the ones you don't. Pray that the ones you like are safe and do well. And the ones that you don't like that uh, maybe uh, eventually you get to like them and they uh, maybe think different as Steve Jobs used to say with Apple computers. Think different. Um, we've got law enforcement, much to pray about there because they're in so much trouble around the country. So many people, officers getting shot and killed. Uh, military personnel uh, and their military families and special services personnel and so on. All of these guys, you really want to pray that that goes well because that's a big threat right now. A lot of stuff going on. Now, illnesses and other needs, we talked a little bit about that today. You can pray that we all stay healthy and then uh, uh, coming up in petition that, that God helps you to figure out how to stay healthy. I gave you some, some extra um, bonus tips of stuff you can use to keep yourself strong and healthy, okay? Uh, and if you get sick, by the way, you'll get sick, less sick and for a shorter amount of time and then you get better quick. Isn't that great? That is the result of doing things well. It works out for us. Okay. We want to pray for pastors, like pastors at large and their congregations. Uh, you know, just pastors in general, even the ones we don't know, that pastors do well and teach well and stay healthy. Um, and that's why I mentioned uh, Pastor Joe uh, Griffin. Uh, he's doing better, but he still has a little bit of a kind of a, a dumb cough. They can't even figure out why he's doing it. And he's going to teach on Wednesday night. It, usually the cough comes at night and we're going to see how he does and if he survives uh, or if he has to cut the class short. Hopefully he'll do well. He sounds like he's getting healthier. Uh, remember all the stuff to pray about students, college, high, and junior high schools, and the teachers? A lot there to pray about. And then, like it says here on the other side of the board, on, on this side, the fourth thing, so rebound is first, thanksgiving, intercession for all these categories. And finally, we get to pray for whatever it is that we want to do. 
you know, Lord, should I get that new guitar? And the answer was yes. And I ordered it. But all my other guitars, I'm still waiting for them to get made and sent. It's kind of interesting. I may have to wait a while. So guess what? I got another one coming. And that one, I don't have to wait. It had my name on it. It's special. I should have it within a week. When I get it, I'll show it to you. How about that? So hopefully I'll get it by next week. When I get it, I can't even open the box for 24 hours because, you know, with weather and everything, you have to leave everything alone for at least 24 hours so that the wood and the paint and all that stuff, they don't freak out with temperature change and then crack and warp and do stupid stuff. See, you got to know these things. That's wisdom and discernment. Kachma, it's actually understanding. Wisdom and understanding. Kachma and Bina in, in uh, Hebrew. So, understanding and discernment, you know, similar. Um, anyway, on that note, we're ready to close in prayer and continue with, uh, you know, Wednesday night where we are in Psalm 12. And that's awesome what's going on there. And so we'll get to continue where we left off on Wednesday. And meanwhile, I had a couple other things I wanted to show you tonight too. Um, and in particular, I'll show them to you another time, but soon, because we have been getting away from my exegesis manual. But I wanted you to see some more materials. Believe it or not, this is the same book. There's the old edition and then the new one. Look at the difference with the old and the new in thickness and everything. It's completely different. You know, this was a paperback and this is a hardback and it's so much more information. Like it says here, revised edition, a study of the sequence of prophetic events and by Dr. Fruchtenbaum, here he is, Arnold. And man, is he a great, you know, teacher and believer and messianic kind of guy. And so this was the original uh, study in, uh, of the sequence of prophetic events, the footsteps of the Messiah. <laughs> Pretty interesting. So anyway, all right. Well, we will close in prayer and I hope you have a good night's rest and to see you on uh, Wednesday. So uh, without further ado, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your grace and for the wonder of everything dealing with worship. The fact that we can have a relationship with you and learn how you expect us to live and how to be blessed by you, as a matter of fact, and how to make all these good decisions that glorify you to the maximum and end up being of eternal significance and that when we're with you in heaven forever and ever and ever, you're going to be able to bless us, as my joke in parentheses and quotes, uh, bless us uh, out of our tree. And then as my friend Judy says, well, you're not in a tree. That, she always says that. Anyway, uh, the fun of the fact that you bless us in more ways than we'll ever understand, and we'll have to live forever and ever and ever to keep getting more blessed and under, realize we understood even less. So, but that's what it is. That's what happens. The fact that you are God and we are not. Um, you have the answer to everything and we have all the questions and you answer all of them and you continue to answer more than we even ask. So I pray that you'll make it this way for all of us and that you'll give us the wisdom and understanding that we need, uh, Chakma and Bina, the Hebrew words, so that we do well and that we glorify you to the maximum and that we have a great time with each other as well in this life as we continue to try to make it through. So thank you so much for all the blessings. Thank you for what we studied tonight. We ask all these things as always, B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, translated in Christ's name, amen. And voila. So a salute and uh, hopefully I didn't um, upset anybody in the the realm of the authorities with all these things that, that I brought up tonight. Um, but you have a good one and we'll see you soon. And so on that note, I will bid you a wonderful rest of the night. Get some rest of the night. And as Len just added here, 
Good night. And uh, like that song for the ladies, good night, ladies, good night, ladies. You know, it's a, an old song. But so good night, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you soon. All right. Have a good one. Bye.